Hello everyone, my name is Avid Dattenborough, and this is a wild axolotl. It's pretty cool, and it looks like Bingus, and today I'm going to be telling you all about it. What is the axolotl? The Ambistoma mexicanum, or more commonly known as the axolotl, is an amphibian in the salamander family. They are native to Lake Xochimilco in Mexico and are deemed critically endangered in the wild. They are popular aquatic pets and are being studied intently by scientists for their resistance to cancer and their amazing regenerative abilities. Unlike other salamanders and their close relative, the tiger salamander, axolotls do not become terrestrial and as a result, they may keep features that would be considered larval features in other salamanders. This is because, unlike other salamanders, axolotls fail to release the thyroid hormone and thus do not metamorphosize. This is called pediamorphosis. However, in very rare cases, Axolotls have been observed to release this hormone and metamorphosize into fully terrestrial axolotls, losing their gills and solely using their lungs. The axolotl has a mouth, two nostrils, two eyes, external gills for breathing underwater, four limbs, the four limbs having four digits and the hind limbs having five, costal grooves which help the axolotl regulate temperature, and a tail with a dorsal fin that extends from the back of the axolotl's head around to the tail and almost down to the cloaca. They come in many colors such as black, brown, pink, and white. They are quite large for a salamander, with their length being anywhere from 6 to 15 inches, and their weight averaging at around 3 to 8 ounces. The digestive system of the axolotl is not much different than ours. The food enters through the mouth, travels to the stomach where it gets digested and broken down, and then it gets sent through the intestines and excreted out the cloaca. The liver, gallbladder, and pancreas also help in this process the same way they do in humans. One thing that should be mentioned though is that the axolotl's teeth are very small and are not sharp. This causes the axolotl to inhale its food instead of ripping and chewing it. Female axolotls become sexually mature at around 18 months of age, while male axolotls sexually mature at around 10 months of age. Male axolotls have a cloacal bulge, while female axolotls don't. Females also look plumper than the males due to their eggs. After a courtship dance, a male axolotl will deposit a sperm capsule from its cloaca. The female will then take up the sperm capsule and lay her eggs on individual plants. From there, the eggs will usually hatch in 14 days, and the newly born larvae will start the anything that can fit in their mouth. Unlike other amphibians, axolotls cannot change their sex. It should also be mentioned that female axolotls have ovaries and male axolotls have testes. The axolotl has an interesting circulatory system. Like other salamanders, the axolotl has a three-chambered heart. This heart consists of the left atrium, the right atrium, and the ventricle. The oxygenated blood flows through the sinus venosus, which sounds a lot like sussus amogus, prior to flowing into the right atrium. Oxygenated blood flows into the left atrium. After that, both types of blood flow through the ventricle, and they are separated by the spiral valve, which keeps them from mixing. Then, the upper right part of the ventricle of the heart the conus arteriosus directs the blood back into the body. Their heart rate is strongly influenced by temperature. The axolotl obtains oxygen through its skin as well as through its gills and sometimes its lungs. And yes, they do have fully developed lungs even though they are fully aquatic animals. Just like most animals, the axolotl does have a brain and nerves. Lots of nerves. The eyesight of the axolotl is poor, but the axolotl has a good sense of smell and has a sense of rudimentary hearing. Axolotls are mostly solitary animals, spending most of their lives alone. They are also nocturnal and will bury themselves in the mud during the day. 
They also play dead if they feel that they're in danger. If axolotls get too close to each other, they might try to chew up each other's gills. However, don't worry, because their gills will regenerate. Speaking of regeneration, axolotls are masters of it. Most amphibians can regenerate lost limbs, but none can do it better than the axolotl. The axolotl can not only regenerate its limbs, but any body part. That includes any of its internal organs, even its own brain to a certain extent. How can they do this? Well, after sustaining the injury, they will bleed very little, and the site will be covered over by a temporary epidermis, or skin. From here, cells at the site of the injury lose their identity and become like stem cells. This allows them to become whatever is needed to regrow the body part. In just a couple of weeks after the injury, the axolotl will have fully regenerated the lost body part. Although, the axolotl's limb regeneration can only go so far. After some <coughs> definitely humane experiments, scientists discovered that axolotls will stop regenerating their limbs if they have been cut off more than five times. Not gonna get into how they found that out. Scientists are currently studying the axolotl for its regenerative and anti-cancer abilities to see if they could serve any purpose in human limb regeneration and maybe even a cure for cancer. Their research pays off. Maybe in the future, losing a limb might only be as big as a deal as breaking a bone. Hey doctor, I kinda cut my arm off with a chainsaw like an hour ago. Can you uh, give me a treatment so I can get it back? Yeah sure, it should heal in about three weeks. No biggie. Thanks doc. In the water, the axolotl is on the top of its food chain. The axolotl is a carnivore and usually feeds on things like mollusks, crustaceans, smaller fish, tadpoles, worms, and have even been known to be cannibalistic. When eating, sometimes they suck in gravel, which actually helps grind up the food in their stomach. The only natural predator of the axolotl is the heron. A long time ago, axolotls were also considered a delicacy in Mexico. However, they're now legally protected. Even though axolotls are at the top of the food chain in their environment, invasive species like the common carp and tapia have outcompeted the axolotl for its natural food sources. They also have eaten away much of the vegetation in the lake that the axolotl would use as protection for their eggs. These invasive species have been a major factor in the decline of the axolotl population. To fully understand why the axolotl is critically endangered, we must look at its habitat and the history of it. The axolotl was native to Lake Xochimilco and Lake Chalco. These lakes were a part of a bigger body of water called Lake Texcoco, located in Mexico Valley. The axolotl was discovered by the Aztecs, and was even named after one of the Aztec gods, Xolotl. The story of how the Aztecs came to settle in Mexico Valley is actually a pretty interesting story. Basically, they were just walking by one day and saw an eagle eating a snake on a cactus. Once they saw this, they were convinced that it was a sign from the gods and settled down in Mexico Valley. In case you were wondering, this is where the eagle on Mexico's flag comes from. Once they settled down, they built a series of causeways across the lake and they built their capital city, Tenochtitlan, in the middle of the lake. Eventually, the Spanish got jealous and invaded. Also, fun fact, during the invasion of Mexico Valley, the Spanish fed their whole army with axolotls at one point. This just shows how numerous they were back then. Anyway, they defeated the Aztecs and took over Tenochtitlan. But they had a problem on their hands. Dang, I can't believe we finally beat the Aztecs. This is crazy, bro. Yeah, it's pretty insane, but... You know, their Tenochtitlan has a, a lot of problems. Uh, like flooding. It, it, it floods pretty bad and I don't really know how to fix it. Do you have any ideas? Yeah, that flooding is not good. Um, You know why? Why don't we just drain the whole lake? Ooh, wonderful idea. Let's do it. So, the Spanish decided to drain the entirety of Mexico Valley. This probably wreaked havoc on the ecosystem, but sadly, no one really cared about the ecosystem in the 1500s. Fast forwarding the current times, the entirety of Lake Texcoco has been drained and turned into Mexico City. 
Lake Chalco, under the axolotl's native habitat, is now completely gone. The only natural habitat that remains for the axolotl is a series of muddy canals that wind their way in between farmland and what is now left of Lake Xochimilco. These canals cover an area of around 10 miles squared, which is quite big until you consider the fact that it is the last refuge for an entire species of animal. Sadly, that's not even the worst of it. We've discussed habitat loss and invasive species, which have both been significant factors in the diminishing population of the axolotl, but another reason why it is endangered is because of pollution. Mexico City is one of the most polluted cities in the world, with it even being named the most polluted city in the world by the UN in 1992. Because of its high elevation, fuels do not combust completely, leading to more atmosphere pollution. Mexico City is often covered in smog, and the air quality there is poor all year round. Not only does this pollution affect the air, but also the water because of acid rain. Like Xochimilco, it's also polluted by untreated sewage, heavy metals, dangerous bacteria, and garbage. Dangerous pesticides also leak into the lake from chinampas, rectangular farms, that line its banks. The lake is so polluted that even the common carp, an invasive species that can survive almost anywhere, is struggling to survive in the lake. Climate change has also played a role in the diminishing axolotl population. Not only are the things that are causing climate change wrecking the axolotl's habitat, but the increased water temperature is also having a negative effect on the species. Axolotls and their eggs are temperature sensitive, and the rising temperatures don't suit them well. Also, Mexico has troubles with droughts, which can lead to an even smaller habitat for the axolotl to live in. Because of all these factors, the axolotl population has diminished from about 6,000 axolotls per square kilometer in 1998 to only 36 per square kilometer in the most recent survey taken in 2015. Today, Scientists estimate that there are only around 700 to 1,200 axolotls left in the wild. Despite this, the axolotl is nowhere close to extinction. Due to their importance to medical research and popularity among people as pets, the axolotl has been well preserved and successfully bred in controlled environments around the world. However, this isn't to say that we should not care about the axolotls in the wild as most of the ones in captivity are severely inbred. Let's take a look at what can be done to keep this species from extinction and help it thrive in the wild once more. In order to conserve the axolotl, we need to combat the things that are leading to its downfall. As we just talked about, the factors that we need to consider are habitat loss due to the encroaching city and drought, invasive species outcompeting it, and pollution by chemicals and trash, starting off with habitat loss. Local lawmakers should be encouraged to make Lake Xochimilco a highly protected area to keep the city from destroying any more of it. They should also limit the amount of partying that goes on at Xochimilco, as the popular party spot attracts people who contribute to the pollution by throwing their garbage into the lake. Finally, Lawmakers could stop sewage and wastewater from being drained into Lake Xochimilco. Local farmers can also help by stopping the usage of artificial fertilizers and pesticides, and instead farm in the natural way that has worked for generations. Locals can also help by organizing cleanups of the lake and killing the invasive species that plague it. In fact, some of these steps are already being taken. Combining this with a successful reintroduction program would do wonders for the axolotl. Together, if the people of Mexico unite, they can save this precious species from extinction. However, if nothing is done, the axolotl will surely go extinct in the very near future. So, what is your choice? Save the axolotl from extinction? or let an animal that is to bind your nation for longer than it's been a country die out. The decision is yours.
Mexico. Before starting this project, I had no idea that the Act Salado was critically endangered. I had known that they existed, but I never knew just how special they were. This project has really opened my eyes to the importance of the conservation of the axolotl and how small changes over time can lead to disastrous consequences in the future. The sad thing I realized while doing this project is that there are probably many more species that are in the exact same boat as the axolotl, yet get little to no attention held. Industrialization and the impacts that it has on the environment need to be stopped before it's too late. I was environmentally conscious before, but now, even more so. The impact of just little things, like picking up trash when we see it, can make a major difference down the road. I might not be able to help the axolotl, but I certainly can help the ecosystem around me, and you can too. I hope that you have a wonderful day, and remember that together, we can save the environment. Thank you for watching.